Our body has 40 trillion cells talking in a maze of complex pathways. Can we listen in? Can we peek into this maze to guide us in a new chapter of medicine? My own life's journey has taken me through three distinct pathways. In each, I have been the person that asked what happened, grappled with why something happens, and made things happen. I knew my paternal grandfather and aunt through grainy photos, both suddenly taken away at a young age by heart disease. I wanted to know what happens in disease. So as a child, I spent a lot of time hiding under the covers with a flashlight, reading books and science research papers. As I got older, I began to ask the whys. Why do people get heart disease? Why do chronic diseases like cancers and heart disease often come together? And why are they fatal? To answer that, at 13, I turned my bedroom into a fruit fly lab and delved into the molecular roots of heart disease. But then, at 15, something very personal happened that made me decide it was time to stop simply asking why. Some of my fondest memories as a child were spending my summers playing in the sun-dappled jungles around my grandparents' home in Sri Lanka. One person in particular stood out to me, Kumadhu, my grandparents' faithful and loving helper. She was always kind and gentle to me and my siblings, playing with us in the yard and making us our favorite foods. I was shocked and deeply saddened when Kumadhu suddenly passed away from heart disease. To me, Kumadhu's passing away was a personal calling that made me decide I was going to make things happen. I decided I would spend the next years of my life trying to uncover potential cures that would restore health and eradicate the roots of disease. A slow motion disaster that's what the World Health Organization calls chronic diseases like heart disease. Three out of every four deaths are due to a chronic disease, a disease like cancer or diabetes that's non-communicable. Today, 45% of Americans have at least one chronic disease. Far too many lives are lost, and we all likely know someone who has lost a loved one to any one of these conditions. As the global burden increases, despite advances in modern medicine, we must ask ourselves a couple of questions. Why is it so hard to treat? And what is wrong with the way we treat chronic disease today? To answer that first question, these diseases are very complex, which makes them hard to treat. A chronic disease like heart disease is not one condition, but a cluster of connected diseases like diabetes, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure. If we were to think about disease in terms of an iceberg, right now, we're just looking at the symptoms, the tip of the iceberg, and ignoring a whole other world that lies beneath, a world of complex, connected molecular networks, the drivers of disease. That brings me to the second question, the way we treat disease today. Most treatments focus on individual symptoms. We do this largely with drugs that go after a single gene, attacking just that tip of the iceberg. These single gene treatments have had modest improvements. But in the complex molecular jungle of disease, we're still focusing on just one component and ignoring all the pieces below the surface that have gone wrong in disease. The incompleteness of this single gene approach to treating diseases contributes to 90% of drugs failing in clinical trials. $2.6 billion and 12 years. That's how much time and money it takes to bring a new drug to market. We all want treatments that can tackle disease in its entirety. We want treatments that cost less, we want treatments available to patients as soon as possible. The cost, the time, and the limitations in our present approach to drug discovery nagged at me as I was developing a heart disease treatment at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine's Camerato lab. As I was trying to develop a more holistic treatment, I began to look beyond the symptoms, to think differently, like a system that had gone wrong. I began to rethink disease. 
could we treat disease better if we peeked below the surface of the iceberg? After all, every moment that goes by, roughly 40 trillion cells are talking with each other in a giant social network. Let's think for a moment about a network that we're all familiar with, Facebook. Facebook is a social network connecting millions of people around the globe. Much like Facebook, the building blocks of a human cell, genes, proteins, RNAs, interact with each other in a vast, highly connected network. Can we listen to the social network inside our cells and use it to find new treatments for disease? To illustrate what I mean by our cell social networks, here are two models that I built during my research at Harvard Medical School. One is a network of genes, and the other a network of microRNAs. MicroRNAs are molecules that regulate the expression of many genes. In disease, these networks are not working properly. Here, I've shown you these two networks separately, but in reality, these two and many others come together to form an even more complex network. What if we embraced the complexity of these biological networks and harnessed it to treat disease? In my work, that is exactly what I do, rethinking the way we treat disease by moving from that tip of the iceberg, single gene approach to a network's approach. To do this, I first build a map of a human disease, a network comprised of hundreds of genes and proteins involved in a disease. Here's one example of a disease map that I built for heart disease. So how do I go from this big disease network to predicting just one drug target out of hundreds of possible candidates? The answer lies in combining the power of network science and artificial intelligence. This process is like creating a Google Maps for navigating biological networks and arriving at that final destination, a promising drug target. This network platform, which I call Theraplexus, works by walking the entire disease network, using artificial intelligence to learn its structure. It searches for and examines clusters of genes and proteins and RNAs to eventually predict one drug target that is very specific to the disease we are trying to treat. I believe the power of this network approach is in its ability to open new avenues of treatment that weren't feasible before. For example, I use Theraplexus to find a microRNA drug target that regulates key genes in high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and coronary artery disease. MicroRNAs have been routinely left out of drug discovery because of how difficult it is to find promising drug targets, like the one I just mentioned, out of hundreds of possible candidates. The advantage of a data-driven network platform is its versatility in being able to predict virtually any type of drug target, not just microRNAs. In fact, I'm currently expanding the platform to also predict link RNAs a different type of RNA that's also strongly implicated in disease. Using Theraplexus, I have found over 200 promising microRNA drug targets for diseases like breast cancer, lung cancer, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, and diabetes. Each of these 200 microRNAs could be the next breakthrough cure for some of the world's most debilitating diseases. Rethinking disease from a network perspective, can help us move towards finding new, improved drugs that treat disease more completely and with fewer side effects. Reducing the high failure rate in drug discovery could expedite the process, allowing us to get lower-cost drugs to patients sooner. Network science and artificial intelligence have never been more powerful in human history. Using these technologies to unravel cell social networks, to fight disease and transform drug discovery is a paradigm shift. It is one that I am excited and energized to be a part of. But what ultimately drives me is the opportunity to give people like Kumadhu the chance at healthier, longer lives. It is something we can all be inspired by and hopeful of for this future.
For the limits of human knowledge are vast, and the opportunities to improve lives are endless. Thank you.